What do you feel is the root cause of nodules? Can it be corrected by changing the diet to plant-based? So I definitely, definitely believe that diet is important no matter what, you know, when we look at the root cause of any kind of illness or disease, diet plays an important role. There is some correlation between, you know, people who have Hashimoto's more likely to have nodules. And, you know, if we think about what is Hashimoto's, it's inflammation of the thyroid gland. You know, it's autoimmune destruction and there's an inflammatory response there. As far as nodule shrinking, I never like to say never. I mean, they can shrink. We know they can by themselves. Usually it's the smaller ones that kind of just like absorb into the tissue. When they're larger and especially when their consistency is, is they're really kind of tough, the tissue is, those are less likely to shrink on their own. But again, I believe that there's no harm in trying a plant-based diet or whatever kind of diet you would like to try because it certainly can't hurt. And who knows? you know, it could help. Maybe they'll shrink a little. Some people who have Hashimoto's, and I've seen this where they have TPO antibodies, you know, that are high when they cut out certain foods such as gluten or dairy, soy, their, their antibodies can even come down. Now, again, the longer you've had it and, you know, it might give you an indication, like, is this going to shrink on its own or will, will diet may have an effect? I say, why not try diet? You know, <laughs> anyways, you're, you're eating healthy. Would you like to add any, anything, any of your, did you ever try dietary changes yourself? I did. So because I didn't want to have surgery at the very point of diagnosis, I tried lots of things to see if I could shrink my nodules. And I actually, I, I do know that I have a gluten sensitivity. I am gluten-free and I'm sensitive to eggs. And so I've taken that out of my diet. However, for years of doing that, I didn't see any changes. I've tried a lot of supplements and, you know, natural remedies. And just, I even took one medication at one point that there was a study out that said that it had shrunk rats tumors. Mm -hmm. It didn't make any changes. And so, you know, as you said, it's worth it to try if, if you want to try something, but there's not anything that I've been successful with. And I feel like the closest thing that I have found to, as far as dietary changes that, that has been, at least has evidence to back it up, uh, that might support helping thyroid nodules is ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting because of the effect of autophagy on tumors. I did practice that for, I still practice that for a time and did have ultrasounds to see if there was any changes and there was not any changes in, mm -hmm. in a, I actually have a nodule on the other side that was not treated by RFA. It's a smaller nodule. So it's not been uh, needed to have RFA done on it, but I thought this will be my control, you know, to see if these dietary changes make any changes in the size of it. And it did not make any changes. However, it did not grow either. So it, it may not be helpful, but it most likely would not be harmful either in my opinion. And if people want to learn more about what I'm discussing, here, you can Google the word autophagy and just see, you know, the effect of autophagy on, on tumors and, and whatnot. Yeah, no, thank you for sharing. Again, I believe there's value in trying for oneself because you don't want to afterwards, you know, ask yourself, oh, maybe this would have made a difference. It's like, mm -hmm. nope, I tried it and it didn't work. So now, of course, it's worse when it comes to surgery because now it's a question of losing your thyroid or not. Mm -hmm. So even if you have RFA afterwards, you're not going to feel that sort of, oh, well, I should have tried this or that because you haven't lost your thyroid. I agree with you. I didn't want to come out and say, well, you know, they're unlikely for, for big ones to shrink because mm -hmm. I always like to, I don't like the, you know, never like absolutes <laughs> because mm -hmm. in the, at the end of the day, we just don't know. Some people might see some changes, but I love that you, you know, really advocated for yourself and educated yourself and tried all these things so that you have this peace of mind that, okay, I've tried everything. Some people, it's very clear that their thyroid is very large. Their nodules are large. It's causing symptoms for people who have nodules that maybe like aren't five or six centimeters. Maybe they're in the range anywhere. I would say from like two to five, two to four. I mean, there is some actually for really large nodules, there is the belief that it's better anyways to have them treated because they are large. But when it comes to questionable, like, is this causing your symptoms or not? If anybody has any question, you know, you could always see an ENT doctor who can see like, okay, is it causing any kind of pressure on important structures in the neck? We can see that 
partially from the ultrasound. And I know they have their own testing procedures. So if you really want peace of mind for that, you know, to just see, okay, because sometimes people will come in and they'll, they'll have different kind of symptoms. And sometimes it's their reflux, you know, acid reflux that is causing their symptoms. It's not the nodule, but for large nodules, yes, the probability of it being a cause of symptoms is higher. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of this procedure is you're, again, we're not getting rid of the thyroid. It's not a question of, are you going to have a thyroidectomy or not? It's, you know, you're still gonna have your thyroid. We're just gonna shrink the nodules.